Togus Products Company is a 60-year-old startup company, what we like to call ourselves. Founded, like many other manufacturing companies, in a garage in Cleveland on Silverton Avenue. Uh, the founding principles were to build great tools, great products for our clients. Uh, we were foundationally a tool and die shop, so we supplied the automotive industry, which is the rust belt that we still hear of today. And uh, the problem with it was we'd build a tool for a customer, and the tool would ship out, and then we'd have to start all over again. So we had no annuity. <clears throat> 1958, we decided to buy a first machine to continue to manufacture products uh, besides building tools and start our own injection molding business. So we got it in the plastics industry. Um, model continued to grow throughout the, uh, throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, but the perception of manufacturing is that it's reactionary, dirty, uh, industry, you know, tall smokestacks, labor-intensive, capital-intensive model, and it's a lot of linear thinking. Just like the automotive model where they, t they have a rail system that goes through the facility and you just apply, you just throw labor at it to fix the solution. Uh, the downside to being in manufacturing domestically is you are at the mercy of your customer. So we are the, the baby birds in the, in the screen being fed on how to do business by our customers. Uh, we are told what type of material to buy, what price we can sell it at, when we can ship it, um, when they'll pay us. That model's broken, and we recognize that. So what we did in the, uh, throughout the late 90s and early 2000s is we said, okay, who do we want to be when we grow up? As a small company in Cleveland that didn't have the resources to expand to Mexico, to China, to India, or to Europe, uh, we had to figure out you know, how do we become sustainable. Uh, fortunately, we carried no debt. Uh, so we, we weren't at liberty of the bank, uh, the bank taking us over as well. Um, so what we did is we got a, our a QS certification in 1996. We were forced to by the automotive companies. The downside to that was, again, they were controlling how we did things. So we got our QS certification in July. In August, we fired 56% of our business, that automotive industry that told us how to do things. We decided to, to really focus on um, three principles. One is our employees keeping them happy, creating a work-life balance. Two, uh, great customers. Customers that care about us, want us to be successful, want our people to be successful, want us to grow. Three is great suppliers. Uh, the great suppliers that care about us, they will, they will bring out great new technology, they'll work with us, we work with them to generate new, uh, new products, new development. So in order to do that, um, we decided we had to change the game with our own employees, and we had to continue, start to farm our own talent. As a manufacturing uh, industry, typically what you do is you hire, uh, let's say, temporaries with no skills, you grow them up through the organization, you peter principal them into a position they shouldn't be in, blame the employee and fire them. Not really a smart practice. So what we decided to do is evaluate our business structure, see which employees fit our culture, who wanted to be there, who wanted uh, to grow with Togus. The ones that didn't, we made a change. In 1998, December, no, 1999, the economy's collapsing. Right? We're looking at the next greatest depression. Uh, everyone's scared. We don't know where business is going to come from. Banks are drying up. How do, we, how do we sustain ourselves? So we went through this evaluation process. We had 110 employees at the time. Uh, the downside to that is we had employees that didn't care. So what we did is we, we had, uh, I had State of the Union meetings with each and every employee talking about the change that needed to be made inside the business, outside the business, what was going on with the world, and we found people that still didn't care. So what we did is we cut our labor force from 110 people down to 51. Scary. But what's most important is the business. The business feeds our employees, our employees' families, our customers, their families, our suppliers, and their families. So we needed to become an agile business. And what we did is we decided to go after uh, the next generation employee. And as a manufacturing company, it's, it's very difficult to see who, who is the next employee. Um, we have the traditional process is you go through um, called journeymen, so they're, they're, they're tradesmen. So you go through the trade, but what happens now is kids don't want to go into that manufacturing sector because they see it as a dirty smokestack. So what we did is we re reinvented our business as a technology company, and then we went into the schools. We went after, a, we've got a co-op program right now um, that other manufacturing companies are starting to, to follow, that we have three kids on staff that we bring through. We pay for everything but their beer and their gas. 
They, uh, they get to work from the beginning of our business, from the shipping dock all the way through, how product is shipped out the door, the product development, so on and so forth. Um, we outsource the kids. We've got students uh, in high school and college all around the country that we buy them a CAD package and they, they can design products remotely and turn in hours. So because we're, our payroll system is, uh, is, is a uh, direct deposit system, they can be in St. Louis or they can be in Boston or they can be in Cleveland, it doesn't matter where they're at. They can turn in their hours on Friday and get paid the following week. It gives them a chance to see what the real life you know, what their next, what their career could be later in life. And the other thing for us is we get to watch these kids grow and say, hey, this, they fit our culture, or they don't fit our culture. Um, the other thing we do is crowdsourcing. And crowdsourcing is you throw an idea up and you have people blog it. There's a website called Quirky that's out there. It's a company in New York. That's how they build all of their products. It's a neat site. You guys should check it out. Well, so to create our culture, which we feel is very, very important to us, we had to create a work-life balance. And we like to keep this in Cleveland, so we've got Great Lakes on the, uh, on the one side, Tony Little with the gazelle. <laughs> Everybody likes Tony. And then, the, obviously, the money represents, represents the work. Um, we really do care about our employees. And with this healthcare reform going on in, uh, that's in place right now, trying to push a nationalized healthcare program, we're deciding to fight back. So what we did is we actually started, uh, we put a gym in our facility. We have three personal trainers on staff, free to every employee, spouse, and child from 16 to 24 years old. Free, no charge. If they want to just identify their id, see who they are, um, you know, what's their dietary habits and changes they need to make, they can do that. If they want to train for an Ironman, they can do that as well. But again, if we have a healthy workforce, it lowers our premium, it, it creates, they're a happier employee, they see that we care, and we invest in them. The other thing we've done is we've invested tremendously in technology. Um, as a manufacturing company, you don't really think of us as technology companies, but iPhones. Uh, we've, got, we've got 81 employees. I think we have 60 iPhones in our company. Uh, we use iPads for communication devices. We feel that it's, a, it's an advancing technology that's real time, and, you can, and it's open source, so you can create apps and develop. We have 28 machines in our, in our building, but how do you control those machines between three shifts that we operate uh, 24 hours a day, six days a week? Well, what happens is from shift to shift, we lose data, we lose information. So what we did is we're using iPads to let employees log in, log out, log their data. We create uh, files that they can see videos on how to do things the right way, uh, post questions and concerns. Uh, there's a site down the bottom called Social Text. That's like Facebook for business, where two different companies can communicate within a uh, private, it's basically it's a privatized cell, and you can talk back and forth real time with your customers, your suppliers. Um, we're avid Facebook, Google, Twitter fans. Uh, we encourage every employee as soon as they start to, to, form a, uh, to create a LinkedIn site. All helps with the open innovation. Now, where manufacturing is going. The next generation manufacturing is not that brick and mortar capital asset or the intensive uh, business where you've got to buy heavy machines, you've got overhead cranes, you've got to carry all kinds of material. That's very costly. And what we've seen is there's a lack of innovation out there because there's three types of people. You've got, you've got people that know how to do it and they have the resources so they go develop products. Then you've got employ or, uh, people out there that don't, they have a great idea. They drew it up on a napkin, but they know that, that manufacturing is capital intensive. The idea dies on their kitchen table. And you have the third person that has a great idea, draws it up on a napkin, and they have no idea where to go, so it doesn't go anywhere. Well, there's companies out there like us that have created, uh, it's called additive manufacturing. Out in the lobby is one of our machines where we can take an idea from a scratch piece of paper, put it in a CAD file, use Google SketchUp to do it, it's free. And we can import that file and print the parts. Uh, one example is an iPhone cover, customized, 45 minutes. From design through production, tear it off, put it on your phone. This product is not just for prototyping, but it's also for production which is really, really cool. We are going into a society where it's not about mass production, it's about mass customization. Have it your way, right away, on demand. This technology does that. There's some uh, pictures up here. Uh, there's an iPhone cover. There's, uh, you've got uh, prototype parts that go to production in the bottom left. We're printing furniture in plastic. Uh, there's another additive manufacturing process called DMLS. This is printing steel. Remember the old mindset of the dirty, the dirty smokestack, the manufacturing facility where you buy a big block of steel, you machine it all out, that costs a lot of money, and as oil creates waste, creates, goes in a landfill, you know, it's, it's an environmental nightmare. This additive process is we can take steel in powder form and we can grow it. No waste created. You think it, we can make it. That's what's really cool about this product. 
um, knee implants, hip implants, um, uh, cervical, uh, cervical spacers. These are printed today. Uh, there's actually another technology that's, that is advancing. It's not quite there yet. It hasn't been FDA approved, but you're actually going to start printing organs. So when you think about organ transplants, you know, it isn't waiting for to harvest an organ from someone that dies. They can actually grow it. Pretty cool. So the old manufacturing model is that big building with all the machines at capital intensive. This is a picture of the new manufacturing model. This is a building that we put up inside of our building. These machines are, you got little machines out there through to big ones, but it's clean. It's kids developing products. It's not that tradesmen. So it creates everybody in this room can be an innovator and come into this room and lead with a product. We've got an 11-year-old boy right now who has autism. He, uh, he has anxiety issues. And he thought of this idea on his own. His name's Tommy, where uh, he can create a device that will help him predict when, when, um, when he becomes uncomfortable in an environment, whether it's a, it's a classroom or it's in a social setting. Well, he came up with this idea, we brought him in. He's developing the product right now. We taught him at 11 years old how to use Google SketchUp. We're getting files today that we're actually going to make his part for him. 11 years old. Pretty impressive. Change the rules. This is me inside of a machine. Um, but at the end of the day, anything's possible. The technology's out there to do it. That's all.